we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy New Year, happy 2024 to each and every one of you. I welcome you to this new year in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that as we journey through this new year, we will receive the abundance of God's grace and blessings. May everything that he has proposed for us, everything that he has planned for us, will be achieved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our God and our Savior, thank you for bringing us into this new year. We are happy, we are grateful to you. Receive all glory and praise. Receive honor, dominion and majesty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, please be merciful to us. Forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us and make us holy, Lord. As we hear your word, strengthen us. Father, please strengthen us. Savior, let your word purify us. Remove every dross from our hearts. Let your fire fall upon our hearts, O God. And let us burn for you and you alone. Help us never to look back. Help those who are falling to rise up now. Because there is no more time. Now is the day of salvation. As we hear your voice today, O Lord God, help us never to say no to you. Help us to burn with unquenching zeal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty we serve, we bless us all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel Hosanna E. E. David, and also like and share this video. I sincerely want to encourage those of you who have been sharing our videos and those of you who have been supporting our ministries financially. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in Jesus' name. In case you want to support us, feel very free to support us so that we can keep the ministry going and also keep our charity organization running. God bless you. So today we want to talk about strive to enter heaven at all costs. Strive to enter heaven at all costs. I think heaven is a gift. If salvation is a gift, why do we still need to strive? Do we need to strive? It is free. Is there anything to strive for? Does the Bible say we should strive or we should just relax because we have received the free gift of salvation? Is there any responsibility? Salvation is free, yes. Do we need to strive at all? And if yes, how do we strive? Let's look at the word of God, Luke chapter 13, 22 to 30. Luke 13, 22 to 30. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter. At the straight gate. Straight means narrow. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and will not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and are shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, 
Open unto us, and it shall answer, and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall he begin to say, We have eaten and drunken in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. 27. But ye shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last we shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. I have a lot of burden in my heart today. A lot of burden in my heart. Salvation is of the Jews. It is through the Jews. When God created the earth, he chose Abraham, through whom the whole world will be blessed. And the whole world today is blessed through Abraham. If you look at the three religions of the, the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, you will know that, yes, Abraham is blessed. Through him, God reached out to the whole world. When Jesus came, he came through Abraham, the seed of Abraham. When he will return, he is going to return also to the very land that he once lived, which is the land of Israel, and he is going to reign from Jerusalem during the millennial reign of Christ. But Jesus is saying here in verse 28 of Luke chapter 13, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And ye yourself thrust out. But people are going to come from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, and there we, you will see them in the kingdom of God. Sitting at the bosom of Abraham. But the children of the kingdom will be thrust out. And outside there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because of disobedience. Because of disobedience. Do we need to strive if salvation is of the Jews? If the gospel actually came to the Jews first and their rejection of the gospel makes salvation to flow over to the Gentiles, like Paul, after talking to the Jews and trying to save the Jews, they turned a hard heart and persecuted him. What did he do? He turned to the Gentiles. And he became an apostle of the Gentiles. Do you know one funny thing? That there are more Jews who are Muslim, who are practicing Islam, than Jews who are practicing Christianity. The statistics is about 1.9% of Jews. Are Christians just 1.9 percent? Islam is 18 percent. 
There are more Jews who are practicing Islam than Christianity. Why? Because of unbelief. And they have their own reasons. John wrote, he said he came to his own, but his own received him not. Yes, he came to his own. His own did not receive him. But I want to tell you today, strive to enter the kingdom of heaven. Strive. Jesus Christ said, strive. He was asked, is it really true that only few people will be saved? Jesus said in verse 24, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Many people will want to enter, but some of them have so much loads. Too many loads of sins. Oh, when I see Christians sometimes, with so much love for the world, and with their loads of sins, their bags of sins, claiming to be running the Christian race, I weep for them. I weep for them. Because a lot of them are really trying. They go to church every day. They even preach. They have truth. They know. They give so much. But you know what? If they fail to acknowledge the whole truth, they will be thrust out on the last day. One third population are all Christians. They identify as Christians, but how many people are really Christians? Jesus Christ said, for many, not a few, will want to enter. They want to enter. Many want to enter through the narrow gate. But many of them will not leave malice alone. Many of them will not leave fornication alone. Many of them will still have wives and husbands, but will still go out to seek for pleasure with people they are not married to. Even sleep with dogs. Horrible things are happening. And if you look at many of those who are doing these things, they are Christians. Listen, brother, listen, sister. The way is narrow. It will never contain you with your loads of sins. Jesus Christ says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, drop your loads of sins. I was telling someone today, I was telling him some of my persecutions. And how Satan has sent many people to me. And I told him, I have the recordings of people that have been sent to me. To come and tempt me, to come and seduce me, to come and use their evil powers to mesmerize me. And some of them, I told him, some of them, I put them on record. Confessions. And I told him, do you think it is easy to preach the truth? Do you think it's easy? Let me tell you one thing. There are many people who are genuinely called. They are not actually preaching lies, but they don't preach the whole truth. Even when they speak the truth, they don't say it without seriousness because they are afraid for their lives. And I tell you the truth, except everyone that is called preaches the whole truth they will never enter because half truth is as dangerous as a lie in fact some people say it is even more dangerous strive to enter heaven at all cost heaven is a beautiful place two seconds in heaven you will forget all your troubles strive to enter 
Jesus Christ said, strive to enter through the narrow way. For many will want to enter. Many will want to enter. Sometimes I see some people and I look at their zeal. But there is a shame on their necks. The shame of immorality. The shame of of spiritual possession, the shame of marine witchcraft, the shame of spiritual spouses, the shame of witchcraft on their neck. Sometimes I get so attracted to some people because of their seriousness, because of their zeal. And by the time I get very close, they want to poison me. And a lot of times God allows me to go so close before I come to realize that at the point of wanting to harm me, the Lord would just open my eyes. I was telling someone today, I said, I can't even blame God. That was this night. I said, I can't blame God. For so many years, I never knew this person is possessed. We were talking about two people. I never knew. I used to share my secrets. Only for God to reveal to me that this person is possessed. This is what and what and what and what this person has planned against you. And until the plans actually came to the point of execution, God never told me. And I was telling the person that I can't blame God. He has a right to keep information away from me. I'm used to it. I can't blame him. But I looked at like a fool in the eyes of those people. I looked like a, a stupid person. Because God has revealed to me even about global things. But it, it shut my eyes to these things. I never saw them. There was there is this man of God. I, I visited his church one day. Precious holiness with all seriousness. And I said, Wow, I found a friend. And I told him, I'm going to be coming every month. We live in different cities. I'm going to be coming every month. Let's pray. And so before I went to him, I saw him in a vision. Planned accident to harm me, to kill me. And I said, what? God said, stay away from him. I weep when I see people who are so serious and zealous. But the whole of their Christianity is built upon witchcraft and deadly and poisonous Sins. I weep. Jesus Christ said, a lot of people, many in verse 24, he said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Shall not be able. They shall not be able to enter. Why? Because he has shame. Of confessing their sins because they are ashamed of opening up and seeking help because they are ashamed of telling their husbands that you are not the father of this child as a matter of fact many Christians today they choose to die with their sins than face the shame temporarily they choose to die with their sins as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't even know what heaven is. There's a video I did some time ago, some years ago. It's on my uh, personal YouTube channel, how I overcame backsliding. And I, I knew that it is not by strength. When even as a pastor, when I faced 
So much temptation. Let me tell you something. A lot of people don't know, and I've never said it publicly before. When I faced so much temptation, this was around 2014, even as a pastor. So much temptation. I called my mom. My two brothers know about it. I called my mom and I told my mom, the temptation is too much. I was the administrator of our hospital, St. Andrew's Hospital in Robert Road, Worry, a church hospital. And we were bidding our vicarage, so the only place for me to live was the same hospital. The hospital was just across the road. It wasn't in the vicarage. And while I was there, I, I, I moved to a flat. It was a three-story building. It's a three-story three building, and I was at the last floor. Temptations, so many temptations. And for the fact that I was fighting corruption and preaching the truth, some people resolved to make sure they sleep with me. And when I saw that the temptations were too much, I told my brother called Israel, I told him, please come and stay with me. I'm staying alone. It's not easy. So many temptations. I need to have you in my house. He's my immediate elder brother. So he moved into my house, into my apartment, but he wasn't serious. He picked a few of his clothes. He refused to move in with me. I told my mom to beg him to move in and live with me. Because they, I was staying alone in the house. So much temptation. When I saw that the pressure was too much, I moved into the vicarage, into the church premises. I moved from a flat into a one-room apartment. Just one room, one room with a toilet. The place I was cooking my food, rats would come and mess up the place. But I never cared. I was so concerned about my salvation. Because you don't fall twice, you fall once. You don't fall twice. Once. Don't joke with your salvation. I was it a shame, even though I was a pastor. I was it a shame. Confront your sins. Confront them in hell. You can't hide your sins in hell. People will scream. Some of you listening to me now, you are going to scream in hell. You are going to scream. Do you know what it means to be in, in a liquid fire? When fire enters your mouth, enters the whole of your intestine. And you are screaming and asking God for mercy. There's no rest. And there's fire consuming everything. This is not the kind of fire we use in cooking. This is hotter than the fire you use in melting irons. But because you came out of God, because you are a spirit living in a body, and with a soul, you will not die. And there are worms tormenting you. Do you know what I lose by preaching this message of salvation? Do you know what I lose? But Christ is my king and Christ is everything to me. I lose a lot of things. I have no friend, not even one pastor friend. I have no friend. Not even one friend I don't have. I have no friend. I've been indoors for a number of days now. Since when have I been indoors? I haven't come out of my house. And nobody has visited me. This is how my life is. This is how lonely my life is. 
but I don't care. One with God is majority. I lose a lot of things to tell you the bitter truth. And if you fail to repent, if you fail to strive to enter into this kingdom at all costs, you will remember these words in tears. Strive to enter into the kingdom. Don't die with your sins. Don't. Don't die with your sins. Open up. Cast all your burdens upon the feet of Jesus Christ. Bring them to the feet of Jesus and drop them and tell him, Lord, I need to change. Help me to change. Deliver me. Help my unbelief. Save me from this burden of sin. And you know what? It's going to save you. I remember when I gave my life to Christ again. In the year 2000. Anytime I want to pray about my Christian life, I will just cry. And just cry because I saw temptations all around me. Right. When I look inward, I see my human weakness so huge before me and my strength very minute, very small. And I used to cry. And I remember whenever I knelt down to pray, I would cry and say, God, you know I love you, but I have no strength. Please help me. That was my prayer. I have no strength. I can't do it on my own. But that same God helped me. Are you striving to enter? How have we, how much have we been so deceived to believe that with your lot of sin you are entering and everything is sugar, butter, and bread? No! We will strive and the, the way is so narrow that you have to be so 100% dedicated to your calling as a Christian in order to fit into the path and be able to travel into the kingdom. I mean, the kingdom of heaven. There are evil times you are on, on your right. Somebody offends you and you forgive in the midst of tears. You want to forgive, but your heart is saying, no, don't forgive. But for the sake of the kingdom, you see tears rolling down your eyes and you are forgiving. Because you have no other option than to forgive. What have you suffered for the sake of the kingdom? What have you given up for the sake of the kingdom? Is this the same Christianity that some people, because of their faith, were skinned alive? Is this the same Christianity that some people were thrown to the lions, beasts, bears, and they were torn apart? Is this the same Christianity that some people gave up their lives and were burned at the stake? Peter was crucified in an upside down cross. Do you know what it means? To be crucified downward. Do you know what it means for your legs to freeze? And you were there. And there's nobody to save you. Only you to save yourself. Do you know what it means? To be beaten to, for your legs to be your bones to be crushed gradually and you are being asked do you recount or not should we strike you more and when you say no i believe in jesus they hit you again do you know what it means to be crucified upside down do you know what it means 
to bleed to death gradually and you are the only one that can save yourself and the only way to save yourself is just to say no i can't take it anymore i'm done take me down i reject jesus christ is this the same christianity <laughs> That is why I tell myself that this Bible, this Bible you see, this was sustained by the blood of the saints. I can't hold this sacred book in my time and cut off some pieces from this word and speak lies people died to preserve this book people shed their blood people were disgraced people stood to defend their faith and now it is my time to hand over the same truth holy to the next generation if jesus christ tarries it's better to die standing than fall and never rise again. And I say, any faith that we profess as Christians that cannot die to defend should never be preached. We have but a few days in this world. We have just few days. And I'm not going to because to use because of these few days to mess up my eternity i have a home in heaven there is a beautiful place heaven. i will never on no account give it up for anything i was born poor i've seen poverty i have seen suffering and i'm ready to continue to suffer in this world if that's my lot, if that's what God has chosen for me, I will gladly embrace it and suffer to the end. I'm not the first to start suffering. I'm not the first to start facing persecution. I don't know about you. There is a place that is prepared for us in heaven. A hug from Jesus. Just hugging him just seeing the saints who was conquered by their faith those who gave up their lives for the sake of heaven for the sake of the gospel just seeing them that joy is enough to wipe away all our tears it is not easy tell you if any soldier true soldier of jesus christ tells you it is easy it is a lie in the midst of preaching the truth we face a lot of setups a lot of persecutions a lot of spiritual fight but we will not give up i will never give up this truth because i've tested it i know Christianity is truth. I will never give up. I know what I'm telling you. There is a place that is prepared for us in heaven. Strive to enter. Just strive to enter. It doesn't matter what you pass through. Just strive. We have but a few days here. We have the whole of eternity in heaven. Don't give up on your faith. When I see people, children, prostituting, and I can't even help them, I feel bad because it is about their souls. Their souls. It is about their souls. People are committing havoc. Listen. 
Do you think I don't know what to do with money? Do you think I don't know what to do with money? <laughs> I know what to do with money. But I told myself that so long as I see people perishing and going to hell, I'm going to do the best I can to help. I can only, this is my way of crying for those who are perishing. By doing the best I can to help. It's not that I don't know what to do with money. And unfortunately, people refuse help. I saw three children who are already prostituting themselves for money. I paid them to talk to them. I have their video. I, I secretly recorded them because it is a crime to be found with those children at that hour of the night in my office. I begged them. I paid them. I said, I preached to them. My Bible was there. It was in my office. One of the days I preached. I can't remember the message I preached that day. In my office in worry. And I told them, I'm not here to sleep with you. I'm a pastor. This is my Bible. I, I just want you to stop prostituting yourself. I talked to them. I took them home that same night. Took picture with them. I'm going to do a video and talk about this. I begged them to go to school. I told them I have a charity organization. I'm giving you scholarship. They refuse. They refuse. Anytime I call their number, they're busy my call. They moved from the place they were and moved to another place, an unknown place. Children are prostituting themselves. I mean, children. Among those children, one of them was 17 years old and one told me she was 13 years old. Is it 13 or 14 years old? She has it even developed breast. Just, just small thing there. And I asked her, how are you able to do this work? Don't this man ask you of your age? She said, no. How do you manage to cope? This is the kind of world we are living in. People are on their way in their millions going to the fire of hell. If you are saved, do everything within your reach to pull people from the path of destruction. Listen, as of Apostle chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. We must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Listen, this world is a heaven of many people. This world is a heaven of the false prophets and they enjoy it to the fullest. If this world is your hell, if this world is your earth, strive to enter. Even Jesus Christ himself suffered to enter glory. And that is why I put this scripture here. Luke chapter 24 verse 26. Ought, ought not Christ to have suffered these things? And to enter into his glory. If he had a crown of thorns. If the one. That purchased our salvation. Had the crown of thorns in this world. Why are you looking for the crown of gold? Why are you looking for the crown of silver? The crown of gold. In a battlefield. 
We are in a battle for it. It is a battle for your soul. Satan needs your soul. The devil is interested in your very soul. And you are playing. You are pursuing money. Pursuing wealth. Pursuing the good things of this world. At the expense of your salvation. Are you not aware. That majority of preachers. And pastors. And prophets. Are men. Distractions. They are distracting us from the real battle. It is a battle for your soul. The devil, the devil doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your job. He doesn't need your marriage. The devil is not interested in your body. He's not interested in your health. He is interested in your soul. What shall a man gain? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. So what shall it profit you as a man when you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Satan is not interested in your money. He is interested in your soul. But our pastors are telling us, majority of them, Except a few that speak the truth. They are telling us that Satan is against us progressing financially. Well, that's truth. But they are telling us that's everything he's after. They are not telling us that Satan is attacking your finances. He's attacking your job. He's attacking your marriage. He's attacking your relationship. He's attacking your family because of your soul. He's just attacking these things, attacking your health, because he wants to distract you. And you know what? Majority of Christians are distracted. Don't get distracted. Satan doesn't need your money. Satan has money. Satan has money already. He is the God of this world. He is only after your finance because he wants to distract you he wants to tempt you so that you can give up on the reins but i'm telling you today don't give up don't give up look at what jesus christ said matthew chapter 10 verse 38 and he that taketh not this cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me and in Matthew 16, 24, he said, Then he said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Have you taken up your cross? Are you carrying your cross? And if you are carrying your cross, are you taking that cross to Calvary? Meanwhile, what kind of cross are you carrying? Is your cross able to lift you up? Listen, you are not taking that cross to your village. You are taking that cross to Calvary. And the cross is for your crucifixion. Jesus Christ carried his own cross and he was crucified on it. Your cross is for your crucifixion. Some of you have carried your cross. You have gone past Calvary. Some of you are even carrying a plastic cross. It can't even bear your weight. Some of you are carrying fanciful cross that can't bear your weight. Listen, the cross is for crucifixion. Carry your cross. Deny yourself and follow. He who finds his life shall lose it but so if, uh, whosoever loses his life for my sake shall find it deny yourself and come after him follow after him jesus christ is a way is a truth and a life 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Are you seeking the kingdom? Have you given up on your faith? Are you because of your wife giving up? Are you dropping your cross? As we are talking now, are you carrying your cross? Or you have left off the path of righteousness and now following those who tell you it doesn't matter anything. Just live your life the way you want. Salvation is free. Once you saved, you saved forever. Do you know that there is a mass exodus of black people into paganism? There is a mass exodus of black people in Africa into idolatry. Mass movement of people from Christianity into paganism. Because many of them have been deceived. I watched one of them this week. Two days ago. Either yesterday or two days ago. It was on a live video. And he tore his, his, his dress. He tore his shirt and said, I tear my shirt to curse every pastor. I tear my shirt to curse every prophet. You have come to destroy our lands with Christianity. He was so bitter. Why? His name is Matthias. A Christian name. He tore his shirt. Why? Because he's bitter because of the way false prophets have come to destroy Nigeria. They have destroyed this country. They have destroyed Nigeria. And they are still destroying this country. Do you know that? Scammers, scamming have not started in this country. I, I, I saw a lady, a white lady saying, Russia should stop bombing Russia should stop bombing Ukraine. They should go and bomb Nigeria because that's where the scammers are. Now let me tell you, the scamming has not even started. It hasn't started. Do you know we have a training that is coming up, a training that my charity organization is organizing. It's coming up on, on the 15th. It's online. We have, we, we, we have the flyer. The training is free, free of charge. If you're a video editor, I'm going to pay you 50,000 Naira after learning it for three months. Do you know that? The people that have applied are just two in number. We did one before. How many people came? We graduated only, we graduated only three people, only three people, they refuse to come. I mean, free training, free, free of charge. This is a flyer. It is free of charge. This is a flyer. Everything is free. I don't know if you can see it well. Everything is free, free of charge. And what are we teaching? Videography, video editing, graphic design, Corel Draw, PowerPoint, Photoshop, MSL, Computer Appreciation, MS Word, free of charge. Video editing. If you want to learn video editing, it's 150,000 Naira in three months. Minimum wage is 30,000 Naira right now. Minimum wage a month. Minimum wage salary is 30,000 Naira. I offer to pay 50,000 Naira for a start, for a learner. And they are not coming. Only two people have applied. Only two. People don't want to work hard anymore. You look for a plumber, you can't get a plumber. You look for an electrician, it's a problem. And you see them, even children. 
are being groomed to become scammers. The scamming is yet to start if nothing happens. Because even free training, you give them job, they don't want to work. I gave one job, 18 year old boy. Within a month, he finished 140 gigabytes of data. 140 gigabytes of data. Within a month, he wasn't uploading videos. He was just, just to update websites. 140 gigabytes. And this is what they do. They don't sleep at night. Nobody wants to work hard. I trained a boy. I was giving him 20,000 naira allowance every month. Anytime he's sick, he told me he's an orphan. Someone, someone recommended him to me. He told me he's an orphan. I gave him two mobile phones he was using. Two Android phones he was using because he needs this phones to learn. Gave him a laptop. I trained him on computer appreciation. Trained him on web design and on video editing. One day I said, just give me your phone. Let me check. I saw some things. I said, what is this? He said, is it so scamming? You are scamming people. An orphan. You don't want to work hard. You are scamming people. I told him, I hate scammers. I hate scammers. I don't allow them to come near where I am. Because even right from primary school, I started paying my own school fees. I'm not ashamed of my past. Because my humble state, my humble background made me vow that God, if you bless me, I'm going to give all my money to the poor. I was telling someone today that before I die, I'm going to will my properties. I, we, we say we came empty, we come into this world empty, and we are going back home empty-handed. Me, I told him I'm not going back home empty-handed. I'm taking everything along. I'm going to send everything ahead of me. I'm going to wield my properties to the poor. I will wield them out and receive the reward in heaven. May God help me to get there. And that is my goal. Even if I'm poor in this world, I don't want to be poor in heaven. And that's why I do everything possible to make sure that I don't miss this heaven. Even if there's no hell, I don't want to miss heaven. I've invested a lot. I've invested a lot. I've suffered too much. And I'm ready to die. Any moment, any time. For the sake of the gospel. For the sake of the truth. Because for me, to die is gain. And to live is Christ. That's what I write on all my Bibles. Look at it. All my Bibles. This is what I write on all my Bibles. I write it on them. For me to die is gain. To live is Christ. Okay, look at this. I didn't finish it. I was writing it. I have many Bibles. I'm going to complete it today. This is another Bible here. It's what I write on all my Bibles. So I open the first page. That is the first thing I see. Look at it. All my Bibles. I write it. Here's another Bible here. This is another Bible. To die is gay. To live is Christ. This is what I write on all my Bibles. Philippians 1.21 Understand what heaven is and strive to enter at all cost. Don't give up on your faith in God. Don't ever give up on your faith. Strive to enter at all cost. Strive in the face of death. Don't give up. Even on a sick bed, refuse to give up. If the powers of darkness are oppressing you, refuse to give up. Press on. Press on. Just 
Just press on. Just continue to press on. You have a reward in heaven. Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, where I am, there you will be also. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Give your life to him. Don't give him a part of your life and leave the other, other side without handing it over to him. I want to pray for you. If you want to reconcile yourself back to God, I want to pray for you. Oh Lord our God, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I pray for this, your children. That Lord God, help your people. Me personally, I'm not afraid to die anymore. It's one of my least concerns. It's one of the least things I worry about because I know that there is joy in heaven. When a soul receives their final salvation, When death has no more power, when sin can no longer lift up their ugly heads to tempt again, when Satan's power has been triumphed over through physical death, Lord, help your people. Help us, Lord. Help us never to look back those of us who have put our hands to the plow, help us never to look back again. Help us to stand to the end in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for you, those of you who haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. May the Lord God Almighty help you. May the Lord God Almighty help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive help. Receive help. May the grace of the Lord help you. May the grace of the Lord lift you up from the, that lifestyle of sin and help you in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to come out. I pray for you that the Lord will forgive you all your sins, cleanse you and wash you clean in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive grace enough. May the Lord forgive you your sins. As you reconcile yourself back to Him today, as you resolve to follow Him today, receive grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive grace. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. I pray for as many that have been supporting this ministry. May the Lord God Almighty support you. May the Lord God Almighty support you. Receive help so that you can reap your reward in heaven. Receive help so that you can reap your reward, even right here in this world, in the name of Jesus. Those of you who say the truth of the gospel must reach out to the world, may the Lord God Almighty help you. May the Lord sustain your finances. May the Lord sustain your spiritual health. May you never run out of faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In case you want to contact me, this is our contact details. Feel very free to contact me. Contact me and I will pray with you and guide you on what to do so that you can be a part of this kingdom in case you have not repented and also if you want to strengthen your relationship with god or you need counseling feel very free to reach me salvation is free please share this video with someone those of you who have been supporting our ministry please i encourage you to continue to support us don't forget to subscribe to this channel Hosanna e. E. Devi. Uh, please don't forget that Jesus Christ is returning 
back again. So do the best you can to spread the good news to everyone that comes across your way. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.